let's start with Yamamoto though. Okay. So the sweepstakes keeps rolling into another week. I'm actually surprised he hasn't signed yet just because he's he's done quite a few meetings. But why not milk it a little bit? Why not head over to Uncle Steve Cohen's house and check it out and look at all the gorgeous paintings and have a nice dinner? Joel Sherman saying that they did dinner on Saturday at his house with a Mets contingent. So that included Carlos Mendoza. That included Jeremy Hefner, Mendoza the manager, Hefner the pitching coach. Was David Stearns there? remember if I saw him on the list. He was. He was there, too. I mean, that's what I saw. I I, I wasn't there. I didn't ask David, so. <laughs> I'm sure it was a wonderful meal. But he figured, while I'm in town, I'll also hit up the Yanks and see if they want to meet again. So maybe they sit down and they go, oh, Uncle Steve was great. He made a fantastic um, hint at what an offer would be. Because I think they were still right around getting to the offer stage, which can move pretty quickly, and he's deciding where he wants to go. But he hops over to New York. Fans are freaking out. You guys realize that, right? Fans are freaking out. Like This causes fans, I think, to get excited, and it's just been a lot more fun to cover because we're getting more news of what's going on versus the mysterious fake news coming from the Shohei Otani situation. So where are we at? Does this convince you on any front, AJ, that something's going to go down, say, with one of the New York teams because he meets there versus coming from Los Angeles, or it literally means absolutely nothing? Uh, when does his posting when's his posting time up? Jan- January 5th, I think. All right, let's hurry up and get there then. because I think, I mean, yeah, I mean, he's going to sign before that. You think? I mean, he's milked this. Yes. I mean, he's like, cracks with the Amish cows. <laughs> Right, milking this thing like there's no tomorrow. I, I don't know. I, I don't know what's uh, – but January 5th can't get here soon enough. Make a decision, I mean, before Christmas at least, so we can at least have something to talk about before Christmas because, you know, Yamamoto, you know, Phillies, Mets, Yankees, Dodgers, Giants, Blue Jays, White Sox. You know, he's meeting with all these teams, and he's, uh, you know, just pick one already. The bidding just keeps going. The bidding just keeps – it just keeps ratcheting up. Every time you're seen with Steve Cohen, you you tweet a picture. Like, I think they should do this like high school. Eventually, his decision should be like high school. Sit at a table, have all those hats out, but then give, like, one last, one last, like, I'm going to choose this one over here, but unless they want to call, like, we have a couple extra calls. Hang on one sec. Okay, you want to? Yep. Up. Okay. I'm going to choose a different team now. He's he's playing it. To me, I think you see the personalities. Like Shohei's personality, he's kind of reserved from what we've seen. He doesn't – not a lot out there. His, we didn't know a lot. There was a lot of, you know, secrecy in his free agency. Maybe this means Yamamoto's a little bit more like – I like being out there. I like kind of being the center of the spotlight. And, and Jonesy said – Adam Jones said the other day – he likes Rolls Royces, so maybe he likes a little bit more flashy, and this is a little flashy. I like it. Go to Steve's house. You guys seen the picture of Steve's house, by the way? Unbelievable that that's an actual house. That's like AJ's people. What would you call it? A museum, like an art museum? Yeah, I mean, it looks like it looks like one of those. Like it looks, yeah. See, AJ's like, eh, it's kind of mid. Yeah. It's kind of mid for the people I I hang yeah. out with. It's below I, average. I don't hang out with any billionaires, so this is this. It's like it's like wings of wings. It's like a it's like a small middle school. AJ's like it's between you know Tiger and Griffey for me, something mm. in that. Mm. Nah. Michael, he was thinking, those he was thinking guys are Michael. too small time for what we're talking about. He was thinking about <laughs> Michael. He was thinking about Bezos. Those guys. I'll, I'll throw this out there though. AJ, I think he's going to New York or LA. Now that gives me oh, I mean, three team options. Is that obvious? I mean, it seems like it. Yeah, yeah. I just. What about I, Philly, I, though? What about Philly? Unless Tottenham tells us he's the, going the to Philly. The real question is, why was Kratz not at the Phillies dinner they had with him? They, I mean, How do you know, I wasn't. Well, because you would have told us by now. We would have heard a tweet about it by now. Oh yeah, I would have definitely tweeted. <laughs> Trust me, we would have got a tweet. It would have been an Aussie, me and Yamamoto. So, so my question is, is. The Dodgers we heard had Shohei and Freddie and Mookie and Will Smith and Dave Roberts and everybody else and Magic Johnson and and you know Larry Bird and 
anybody else from LA that you can think of off the top of your head, but there's just no, then you hear about Philly and they had to zoom in Bryce Harper. Bryce Harper couldn't fly in for this or what? I don't understand. Where was JT and where was Schwarbaums and where was Trey Turner and where was Wheeler and where was Nola? Instead, they're like, hey, uh, Yamamoto, we're going to zoom in Bryce Harper. Yeah, he couldn't make it. I mean, that's, I don't know. To me, it would have been cool to, to be in the meeting and sit down and, see, and and hear about it. You know, if you're the Mets, where's Francisco Lindor? Where's Peter Alonzo? Where's, where's some players that he's going to get to hang out with? Yeah, that's my thing. Is the Mets didn't really roll out the red carpet. I mean, the manager, the pitching coach, and the Cohens and Stearns. Stearns was there too. All but the they've already that- done meetings. Stearns and Cohen flew out to Japan to meet with him. But you're saying you wanted players involved. I mean, how does this is the players? You're selling a guy um, on a ten-year contract. You're okay, selling- so how does it work? What if they're away? Also, they all live in different places. I, I don't know where some of those guys in LA live, but. Oh, what is that? There's there's those things that go. There's the these things called private jets mm. that I'm sure if you're going to spend 250 to 300 million on a player, you can spend a couple grand to fly Bryce Harper if he's in Vegas to Philly for a day or two. And hey, you know what, Bryce? We really need you here. JT, we know you're wherever he's living. If he's living in Florida, he's living in Oklahoma where he's from. Hey, dude, we can have Bryce's plane land in Oklahoma, pick you <laughs> up, and then it can be in Philly in two hours. Like, I, I mean, to me, it. You know, the Dodgers obviously roll out the red carpet for everybody and do everything, but it's cool. I think if I've never, again, been on this level before of where you're getting this kind of attention, but if you are, man, you got to try everything. If that includes bringing in future teammates, you got to do it. Did the Yankees do that? They didn't say. The the Yankees have only said they met with them. Right. So it doesn't sound like anyone did that besides the Dodgers. Mm Mm-hmm. Maybe that's why uh, the Dodgers sign everybody. True. I mean, I that worked Yankees. for what you think the Yankees brought Judge. I mean, let's put it this way: they were they were all at they were all at Kinger's wedding, so you get the boys together. I'm pretty sure. You, but he doesn't want to see like Yamamoto wants to see the future. So you brought in the future with the Dodgers. That's an easy that's an easy sell, especially if everybody's out there. CC be- and Judge were there, though. By the way, we're getting. Who? Um, CC, Sabathia, and Iron Judge were there. Okay, I think so good. You know, I, I think- if I'm there, I want Judge. That that's who I want. Now, also, you don't know. Does does this guy really care? I think that, I think based on what Adam Jones said, and I encourage anyone to check out the clip on our YouTube from Jonesy talking about spending time with him, two seasons with him, what he's into, what he's like as a person. I think the teammate connection does help, and if the offers are going to be in a similar, you know, three hundred million dollar range, I do think that everything helps for someone like this, right? There's one person. There's one person, and they've already done the research. If it matters, he's the guy that they're bringing. Tanaka, Tanaka. They're going to have him meet. Like maybe he doesn't. Maybe he's not like into the history of baseball, or he's not like, oh man, like this is the guy for me. Like same thing with maybe that's why Kodai Sango wasn't with the Mets you know, contingent that it's, it's all you're now looking into like the research of the person, not necessarily because you've already seen what he does as a player, which is a completely other topic. I don't know that the guys, the guys may be worth what everybody's putting out there. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what, we'll see what he gets. Where, where, okay. So let me ask this. Where is it most important that he signs? Is it New York's? Is it LA? Is it San Fran? Is it Phil? Where, where is the spot that it would make the biggest impact on the team? This San year? Francisco. San, no, I mean, for the next 10 years, if he signs a 10-year, $300 million deal. For the next 10 years, and I'm talking about from this year, for, let's talk the first five, because whatever, you know, injuries, whatever can happen. But I'm saying for the first five years when he signs this contract, what city slash team can he make the biggest impact not only for the team, but for the fan base. San Francisco, in my opinion, but I don't think he's going there. Just based on them looking for superstars, them trying to, uh, I think they'd be able to rally around Yamamoto and Lee. I just, I think for the Dodgers, there's so many superstars there. If they don't get Yamamoto, they move to option, you know, two. <laughs> um, they already got glass now. They'll get somebody else big whether it's via free agency or via trade, they have plenty of prospects. They're just rich in 
their farm system, right? For the Mets, they'll just chill. That's what it seems like. That's the other layer of this story, too, is that Ken Rosenthal put out in his notes that if the Mets don't get him, they're like Yamamoto or bust. We're not going to then go to option two like a Jordan Montgomery. They're like, we'll sign one or two year contract kind of situations and we won't be pushing our chips in as much for next year. The Yankees are another big one on that front, too. But same thing like Kratz, I think. And Ken said, you know, they'd look into Montgomery. They'd look into buying up multiple relievers as well. So for me, I think San Francisco stands out also because I don't know if they'll be as involved in the trade market. Their farm system was pretty weak for a while and now is just getting built up. I don't see Farhan Zaidi wanting to make a trade. So I would rank it San Francisco of the teams that I think are actually in it. Yankees, I guess Mets, Dodgers in terms of impact to the organization. By the way, Thanks. go ahead, Crouchy. I was just going to say that I think the biggest impact will be on L.A. because I think this would put them over the hump. I don't know that the Yankees – the Yankees have to hit. They stay – they figured it out on, you know, putting Soto in the lineup. Now they have to hit. Yes, they have to figure out starting pitching, but I think – Yamamoto puts this team to where everybody thinks they are now because they got Shohei and it puts them in that possibly three world championships in 10 years. The Yankees, they get Yamamoto. They still have other things to do in the next 10 years while they're there. This solidifies it that the Dodgers will, you know, have done what they can to be the best team. Well, are they the best team? <laughs> the, the Braves are just over here, you know, laughing at people they're like picking up other people's trash and pushing it out and then they're like picking up and they're like hey, you guys just figure out how to spend your money we'll just keep piling prospects that we think are going to be awesome in the near future by the way the team we didn't even mention jeremy our director the red sox what are they doing this offseason i mean they met with yamamoto right and apparently they offered him 300 million where, where have they been we haven't heard anything about the Red Sox doing anything this offseason, which is very un. Remember, Hein Bloom fired because he wasn't aggressive enough. <laughs> What's Craig Bledlow doing then? He's, he's only working in constraints. He's working yeah. in the constraints that he has. I, no, I would no. love to see. I would love to see what Papelbon said. If you guys would go back and look at the the one uh, game we did, he was talking about how. Oh, you know, he said. They are they are looking to spend. They want to spend. They want to put a winner out on the field. Okay. Now it's time. You had the other – obviously, nobody's firing an owner. The fans are just going to keep being pissed. But if Bloom wasn't aggressive enough and Craig Breslow isn't able to be aggressive enough, then it's not either one of the GM's faults. But this is why they go through GM's like, you know, yesterday's trash. Yeah, I just I don't see it. I don't see them getting Yamamoto, but I do see them spending on pitching. There's still a lot of other pitchers that are hanging around right now. Yeah, then we're going to move on to Montgomery and Snell. So we'll get there. But I think okay, well then, waiting for Yamamoto after, at this point. After Yamamoto goes, okay, then you keep talking about would you rather have Snell or Montgomery? For which team? The, whoever In can general? afford them. Whoever can afford them. I think Snell fits in certain places better than others. I think Monty kind of fits anywhere. No, you disagree. Why, why, do, think, you, why do you feel I like he Snell fits wants better? To pitch. I think Snell wants to pitch on the West Coast. I think if Snell is among other starters that can maybe be the top guy, you know, even if even if he's the best finisher on the team in terms of numbers, you know what I'm saying? Like I, I think that if the a little attention's taken away from him, if you sign him, you're gonna be our one. I don't know. Disagree? He's got two Cy Youngs. Shouldn't he be signed and treated like a one? Yeah, he should be treated like a one. I just feel like if he joins a ball club that's already got a bunch of star power there and he doesn't have to be the guy that they're shoving cameras and mics in his face every day, he's good. He's good with that. I don't know. Yeah, Blake but when you Snow sign for $200 million, don't they shove cameras in your face? <laughs> a lot of cameras. <laughs> yeah, but okay, let's say he signs with the Dodgers. This is a different lifestyle. It is not like I, I, don't, he, I, I don't see the Dodgers taking him. It just doesn't. That's not a Dodger move. Who does he sign with? I would have said Seattle. We've talked about this, but I, they're a, out. That's a non. 
I know. The Mariners. San Fran, if they miss, maybe. Red Sox, maybe. But gosh, I don't I don't know that the Red Sox would go there. I, he's not a Yankee guy for me. He doesn't fit the Yankee. Why isn't mold. he a Yankee guy? He just doesn't fit the Yankee mold. For that's me. what I'm saying. Certain teams, when you but ask me, that's what I'm saying. Isn't Blake Snell, is he the equivalent to Giancarlo Stanton as a pitcher? In the sense that you're like, whoa, this dude's an MVP. Whoa, look at what he's done and can do. Whoa, Blake Snell, two Cy Youngs. He's available in the free agent market. Is he is he that equivalent? Is he that type of is he that type of pitcher? And I think he's going to the Giants to answer your question. 